To most of us, it is a shocking revelation about the 21st century Britain. But for this country's teenagers, it seems it's a fact of everyday life. I get asked for naked pictures at least two or three times a week, one 15-year-old girl told us. And research for this programme, conducted in association with the NSPCC, does suggest that she is fairly typical. The sending of naked photos over mobile phones, or sexting, has, be has become this generation's form of flirting. And a warning, this exclusive report by Rachel Seifert does contain explicit language. I'd get asked for naked pictures over Blackberry Messenger at least two or three times a week. You would have seen a girl's breast before you've seen her face in person. It'd say, like, smiley face for sex, wink face for blowjobs. You mostly wish that the girls were like what the porn stars are like, up for it, ready to do it and stuff. I think boys expect girls to have shaved, like, their pubic hair before they, like, meet up with them and do things because that's how they've already seen, like, women like, how they look. Under Ofcom guidelines, we're obliged to tell you that this report contains language unsuitable for children. But whilst what you're about to hear may shock you, it's unlikely to shock your kids. According to Philip Larkin, sex didn't even begin until 1963, as the pill gave birth to sexual liberation. But 50 years on, the smartphone has revolutionised sex again. Back then, childhood evolved slowly into adolescence. But for the grandchildren of the swinging 60s, growing up is on fast forward. For six months, Channel 4 News and the NSPCC have been speaking to children up and down the country to find out what the average young teenager in the average school faces on a daily basis. The extremes have always hit the headlines, but what we've found is that some of these have simply become a part of growing up today. At the NSPCC, we think this research is important and fascinating, actually, in terms of giving, giving us an insight into the views and attitudes and behaviours of young people and sex at the moment within the UK. What we're seeing is that there's a very regular and normal consumption of hardcore adult pornography, that the sharing of explicit sexual imagery by photos or by video clips is now extremely normal. So I think it's, it's important to recognise that what was previously regarded as unusual, concerning or sensationalist now has, in fact, become the norm. Three, four, five, six, breath The old rules of playground dating have been ripped up and rewritten. With smartphones in almost every child's pocket, the sending of naked images has become so commonplace the children refer to them simply as pictures. And 13 to 16-year-old girls up and down the country have told us they get bombarded with requests, often from boys they don't even know. I've just had a boy pop up just with a picture of his penis. <laughs> just I, I straight up. Well. Not, not, e I'd not even spoken to him. I've been sent a photo of a boy's private parts and... So what, did he ask for like anything back or yeah. did he just randomly send no, one? No, he, he asked for one back and I was like, no. That to me would have just be like, okay, <laughs> that's a bit personal. Especially if you've never met them before, like, yeah. you don't know them. Yeah, that's and they just like, ask never, you... You've never actually seen their face, like, let alone yeah. anything else. Yeah. And I'd be like, exactly. no thanks. I think that now, people sending pictures, people receiving pictures of people's body parts are just na n not natural, but normal. That's kind of the new flirting. It kind of goes gradual. It's like, number one, would you kiss me? Number two, would you do this? Yeah, number it's like three, like, it's like, it one. gets worse and worse. And, like, the last one would probably be really, like, explicit. Yeah. And it would just be like... I think before everyone... Like my dad, the first thing he'd ask her was, could, you, could I give you a kiss? But now it's no, kind of, do you want to have sex? Would you give me a blowjob? <laughs> it seems the teenage fumble behind the bike sheds is old school. Those awkward first moves are now done virtually as sex takes on a 21st century twist. Channel 4 News and the NSPCC have spoken to over 200 children in nine English counties. Researching these changes is Professor Andy Fippin. The change we've seen, the shift is away from just an exchange within a, a relationship to starting a relationship, um, almost like, well, I'll decide whether I'm going to go out with you or not, depending on what you're willing to do before the relationship starts. I think there's, there, there is this sort of new era of flirting. You'd be getting naked photos of them before you've even like met them, seen their face, to like show off to their friends, to have a collection for their own pleasure. Boys are getting naked pictures from all different girls. I think uh, boys probably ask girls for pictures because it makes them feel more dominant. 
over them probably. Getting girls to send pictures might be like a hard thing for boys to do or sometimes it's easy depending on the girl whether she's like a slut or or just quite a nice girl. There's like less relationships based on actual feelings and it's more about kind of like you're hot, I'm hot, let's see what we can do. It's kind of just based around like the bodies more than like what's inside. It might shock parents that like this is what kids get up to but it's to them it's just everyday life, it's natural all part of growing up and that sort of thing. That's the significant thing, is it's really starting to show that this is mainstream, this is normal, this is almost mundane for some of the people we spoke to. In pretty much every school in the country, people in people aged 13, 14 are talking about this stuff and dealing with this stuff. As adults, we naturally want to protect the young and preserve childhood for as long as possible. The children, though, we find what they're doing is shocking, but they've given us a really clear message. They want adults to keep calm and let them carry on. But whilst they feel resilient, they also feel the pressures. If someone keeps badgering you, if so if they asked on Monday and I said no, and then on Tuesday and I said no, then they'd ask every day of the week. And I think they expect you by Sunday to go, yeah, sure. Because boys, we know boys watch porn and stuff. They kind of expect it to look how they've seen it, which is like, well, you know, <laughs> like, like without, like either without any hair on it or just like, in a certain shape and stuff. When they dance with you, they like bend you over. You kind of just have, to, sometimes you just have to stand there until it goes in because you can't just turn around and go, no, go away, like go, don't do that, don't do that and cause a scene. There is almost like a, a, a sexism that's facilitated by this, but almost like a sexism that's acceptable. And there was one interesting case where um, a girl was telling me that a boy was constantly badgering her for pictures. And I said, well, have you told anyone about it? And she said, well, what would they do? And well, if I was in the office and going up to someone every day and saying, oh, send me a picture of your boobs, that's sexual harassment. And she looked at me and he went, I've never really thought of it like that. Boys often get labelled as the perpetrators. But as porn has evolved from the occasional dirty magazine passed around the school to touch of the button streaming, boys say they feel they have a lot to live up to. Grown-ups will be thinking that um, it's the girls that are pressured because they see all like the sun, like the sun page three girls and all this porn. But like, there's just equal pressure to boys and equal demand. They're put under pressure to get these photos off girls, to have muscles, to look this certain way, to be able to like do all these positions and be able to last the longest in bed. Porn isn't just—it's like showing you like what to do and like how to make them how to make them enjoy it because. You don't exactly want someone that's like, you're really into it and they're just kind of waiting for it to end. I think people like my age, boys my age, they might think that sex education at school is not, not, like, not helpful at all, so they'll find their own way and watch porn. And I think that, I think that helps them, maybe. Sex education is part of the national curriculum, but every child we spoke to said what they get taught in the classroom is out of touch, irrelevant and too little, too late. We as a society need to accept that it happens and be more resilient about how we deal with it. Both the adult population and the, the younger population need to acknowledge it happens and not go into hysteria when you hear about it happening just because it's happened in your school. It's happening in all the schools, I don't think. Um, um, Knee-jerk reactions and banning and confiscations and things make any difference whatsoever. I think what young people need is awareness and support. One novel way of approaching sex education is happening here in the school in Warwickshire, where an innovative but controversial new project is simply asking kids what they want to know. So what's Friends with Benefits, Jess? Uh, it's when you're not going out with someone but you still like do stuff with them and stuff like, like sexual intercourse and other stuff with them. So you're not necessarily um, in a long-term relationship with them? No. OK. It's more getting pleasure from each other. OK. It says relationships are rarely straightforward, and that's what Jess has just brought up by writing down a friend with benefits. This school went for the direct approach. To counter what children were learning from porn, teachers and kids put together an explicitly frank website where sex, relationships and bodies were laid bare. What do you think will be different now with this site? How do you think that will help young people to access um, information? It's good because they've actually come to us and asked us what we want. Young people will be able to learn more easy because there's funny things on there, like the sectionary. It involves um, different types of language and different words that people um, use 
in everyday life. When we're in our peer groups, we don't like use the words penis and vagina. We use more common words because we just don't talk like that around our friends. This website that you've created contains a lot of explicit content. Do you think that that's suitable to show to children and to have children being able to access? Many of the things that are on the website are there because the young people specifically requested that that's what they have. My heart's desire is that, that every young person that comes through my classroom will leave sort of knowing how to have a safe, healthy relationship and will leave here as a, as a happy young person. Um, having a family because they're ready to start a family, uh, being in a sexual relationship because they're ready to be in a sexual relationship with the right person because they've made the right choices and that's what motivates me to do this, that's what motivates me to teach the subject. This is the first generation that uh, have not known anything else other than um, a, a completely online life um, and I think that's had, is having and continuing to have significant impact and influence on the way in which they think about sex and the way in which they conduct their sexual relationships. Good quality sex education is absolutely critical. It needs to start actually in primary school. It needs to be age appropriate if we're able to help them navigate their way through these pressures. Society tends to throw its hands up in horror at the erosion of childhood. But technology is not going to go away. Restricting access to porn is an option, but it won't stop children creating their own content. And the advent of 4G will mean not just photos, but self-generated videos will be easily shared. The kids say that adults just need to accept this brave new digital world is here to stay. But what it means for them and us is hard to say.